Hi, my name is Dr. Russell Betts and welcome back to Chemistry Thin 32 Lab instructional videos. Today we will be doing experiment number 12 entitled lipids. Now a lipid is a molecule that's found in a living cell that can be extracted using organic solvents but not with water. Now extracted simply means removed from the cell by dissolving it into a organic solvent such as ethanol or hexane for that, for example. Uh, in today's lab, we'll be look, examining different types of lipids. We'll be looking at uh, steroids, waxes, fatty acids, and triacylglycerols, actually, the, th or the four types of uh, lipids we'll be dealing with. Part one of today's lab, we'll be basically looking at models and drawing them in your notebook. So pick them up in your hands, look at them, examine them, and then draw them to the best of your ability in your notes. Uh, part two, we'll be examining the difference between cis fatty acids and trans fatty acids. You've all heard the terms on the news, I'm sure, cis fats and trans fats. So this is going to give you a little bit of an idea of where those names come from. And then finally, in part three, we'll be doing what's called saponification. It's a fancy way of saying soap making. So what we're going to do there is take a little bit of uh, fat, Crisco, to be honest with you, is what we're going to use. We're going to saponify it, which means we're going to dissolve it into water and an organic solvent and add a very strong base to it and then heat it and I'll show you how to do that later on in this video. With that, I wish you good luck, good chemistry, and don't forget your safety goggles. In part three of today's lab, we'll be doing a process known as saponification. Now to do saponification, we have to have the proper setup because this can be dangerous. We're going to be heating up a strong base to a near boiling point, uh, to the near boiling point of water. So we really have to be mindful of how we're going to set this experiment up. So I'm going to show you how to do it on, on the camera and then to, uh, when you're in lab, we'll actually work together to make sure your setup is right. So I want everyone to do this safely. Now to start with, you need a clamp stand. You're going to need a hot plate. These are found in your bench in one of your top drawers. You need a beaker, 250 milliliters. You need a stirring bar remover, which is just a magnet on a, inside of a piece of plastic. You need a stirring bar, which is just a small magnet wrapped in Teflon. You will need a thermometer clamp. These are found in your bench in the very bottom drawer. You'll need a three prong clamp. And you'll need a clamp holder. The clamp and the clamp holder are found on your bench uh, when you come to lab. So what you want to do, is move this out of the way a little bit, is you want to take the hot plate while it's still cold and not plugged in. This is hot, don't do this, don't burn yourself. Take it and set it on top of the clamp stand. Move it here a little bit so you can get a better look at it. There we go. Don't plug it in just yet. You don't ever want to plug in a hot plate until you're absolutely ready to use it. Put the beaker on top of the hot plate. Take the little Teflon wrapped stirring bar, the magnet, place it inside the beaker. Don't throw it in, just drop it in nice and gentle. You're going to need to put on the thermometer clamp onto the clamp stand, like that. Put the clamp holder onto the clamp stand, like so. And using the three prong clamp, Put that onto here, and then lower it down so you can clamp the beaker. We have to play with this a little bit to make it work, but you definitely can make it work. And then try to adjust it so that the beaker sits nicely on top of the hot plate. Nice, and try to center it as you can, as best you can. You may have to play with the clamps a little bit to make this happen, but it does work. It will sit nicely. There we go. So now, the beaker is more or less in the center of my hot plate. Take the thermometer, slide it through the top of the thermometer clamp to about there, and then place it off to one side of your beaker. Don't, don't place it in the center because that's where the stirring bar is going to be. Place it off to one side, but do not let the thermometer hit the bottom of the beaker. Now that's your setup. After you set it up, you're going to want to raise this back up so it's kind of out of your way. Unclamp the beaker 
leave everything else the same. Oops, it's starting to fall here. That's all right, we'll let that fall. Take the beaker to the balance and weigh your Crisco or your fat directly into the beaker. Do not use a weighing boat to weigh the fat. Weigh the fat directly into here. Come, once you've got your fat in here, come back. Put it back on here. Put your clamp backwards where you need it. Right there. Clamp it up. Thermometer back in once you have your fat in the beaker. All right? Still, I haven't plugged it in yet. Nothing's plugged in yet. Everything's cold. Everything's safe. Put the fat in here, then add the base and the alcohol, and then, then plug it in, then turn the heat on, then turn the stirring on. But not until everything's ready to go should this be plugged in. It should be not plugged in until you're ready to go. Okay? And that's the setup you need. Now, why am I being so insistent on this? Because it's very dangerous. This can really hurt you. So I have it clamped so that if someone were to bump into it, it will not tip over. And my material will be safe inside the flask. Hi, my name is Dion Antipa. I'm a laboratory technician here at Bard College North Campus. And today you'll be using vacuum filtration to collect your soap that you have created in part three, saponification. For vacuum filtration, you're going to need a ring stand, a clamp, a filtration flask that can be found in your station, a Buchner funnel that can be found at the instructor's desk, a concentric rubber stopper that can also be found at the instructor's desk, some filter paper that can also be found at the instructor's desk, and a vacuum pump. To do vacuum filtration, you will first get your filtration flask and clamp it in. Make sure you clamp it in nice and tight because it might move during filtration. You will then place your concentric rubber stopper on your filtration flask and then the Buchner funnel on top. Remember, glass to rubber and rubber to glass is a good seal, but glass to glass is not a good seal. You want a good seal here. You will then take a piece of filter paper that fits your Buchner funnel and place it inside. Using some distilled water, you will then wet the filter paper to ensure a good seal. Make sure that the filter paper is covering all of the little holes in the Buchner funnel. You will now connect your, your filtration pump into the outlet and using one of the hoses, connect the filtration flask. Now that everything is connected and secured, you will now turn on the filtration pump. Make sure, make sure that your filtration paper does not move when you turned on the filtration pump. If the holes are not covered, some of your product, in this case the soap, will be sucked through the holes and you will have less yield. After everything is nice and sealed, you, can, you may take your product, in this case, beaker with soap and solvent, turn on the, the vacuum, and pour in your product. You're going to let that filter through, and you're going to collect the soap and the Buchner funnel. Remember, all of this depends on a good seal. Vacuum filtration works by creating negative pressure in the filtration flask using a vacuum and then using that negative pressure to pull contents through, in this case, the solvent, but leaving the solid on top. You will then take this solid and weigh it at the end of class and label it in the weigh boat.